Hello everyone. You will notice in the title of the video it says update video. That is because I'm not going to be giving a tutorial on this place, but because it's just all command block orientated. I'm creating a CTM map called Risk because I am a huge fan of CTMs. So this might be a very long video depending on what's going on, but I'm just going to give you a run through of my progress so far. So, I actually have not touched this for about three months, so you have to bear with me if I'm a bit rusty on my own knowledge of this place. But I just want to go through some of the basic mechanics with you first. First of all, this is the spawn. It's a nice little icy place. Um, that bedrock there is for spawn point reasons. Um, don't ask me why, it's just how the game works. But I've made it so if you stand on bedrock, you get hunger, weakness, slowness, regeneration, and resistance. So if there's any bedrock around then you can tell that that is a nice safe place to stand but you will risk losing a lot of other things like hunger and your ability to attack. So here it is all written in risk. Um, tell me what you think about the structures and the mechanics and let me know how you think I should improve. So this starting area was a bit of a nightmare to create because it is so this area is so overpowered like it's nearly impossible to finish the first area and then it's very difficult to um, understand what's going on but if you are unfamiliar with a CTM is it's where you have to collect every type of wool in the game and you're not allowed to craft it right here and you're not allowed to cheat um, you're not allowed to go up there either but I'm going to create a command block module which will stop players from doing that anyhow because that just allows them to transport themselves from different places so CTMs are generally quite challenging. Collecting all the wool is a bit more complicated and I will explain how CTMs work throughout the video. But here is our starting area. For food, the only renewable source of food you have to begin with is carrots. And here is your farm plot here. And you have a little bit of wood but not too much. So you have to be really conservative. It is possible to technically lose the game at this point if you run out of wood because if you run out of trees and saplings and such then you, the game is pretty much over for you. So here I've got some basic gear, enough to make some leather things and some unbreaking stone swords. And this is where the command blocks are by the way. I will um, put these somewhere else and seal it all up with bedrock but here they are so far. Now most of these are just doing things like replacing my spawn eggs with mob spawners because I'm lazy. Um, and that's all I have to say about that. Unfortunately, this is a slime chunk, so I might have to do something that gets rid of the slimes as well because they are quite a pest. You start off in a little igloo type, type thing. Now you notice that there aren't many resources around. I mean, the only renewable source here is um, carrots, and that's about it. You have to be very conservative with how you use your wood and your special items because this makes the next section quite difficult and also there are some hidden chests hidden all over the map. I won't go into too much detail about them unless it is a very specific item. So because this is my good copy of the world I'm just going to um, do this. So immediately you'll see some spawners. Now usually when you play CTM maps you light up the spawners or you break them. A lot of this stuff isn't command block based um, and these generally you play them in survival mode and things like that. So all of this was made in MC Edit. I did not use my World Edit one for, for this because um, it wasn't invented back then. But as you can see, it might seem to, like to professional CTM players that what I'm doing is quite overpowered, but trust me, it isn't. This area is really, really difficult. And there are places like behind here. Um, is this a trap? No, it's not a trap. So some places are concealed with diorite, it's pretty obvious. Now this is probably the first split in the pathway. One goes down this way, where you get tons of spiders and quartz. Still notice how there's no stone that you can use and no saplings and nowhere to grow trees. So this is like your only source of wood. You don't really get a lot of things. Okay, so you get some grass so you can make some seeds if you are lucky. Now uh, let's move on this way. Now this chest here, I'm gonna go into game mode three for it because if you actually open the chest in game mode 1, because this isn't real snow, it will update and disappear and you will fall into this hole. 
um, you'll have a mini heart attack, but um, I decided to be a nice and just put a little bit of water there because the real struggle is getting out of this place. It's a lot harder than it looks. Uh, let's go back into game mode once and mobs spawn. So you notice there haven't been any custom mobs lately, I've just left mobs as is. So yeah, here are some zombies. Um, a nice little lookout here, um, surprise spawner. I don't want to spoil too much, <laughs> but I've already gone off to a bad start as far as spoiling goes. Uh, there's this very large area which you can you can approach this in many different ways because this is a survival mode you can pretty much do anything if you want to just create a pillar from here to here you can do that but I might have foreseen that you might do these things so I could build contraptions that will go against players strategies and you will see that in the future as well I've also got this spruce wood here so you can make more tools if need be if you get to this point I do hide chests everywhere, don't want to spoil too much though as I said. Now it's not until here that you actually find our first custom mob, the white skeleton. Now these guys they don't really do anything except drop really weak iron swords, but they can be combined into more strong iron swords, so you, you have an infinite supply of iron swords so long as you leave one of these spawners here, and then you can make a farm out of it. So let's keep moving, this is a nice little narrow area. Actually I might talk about the design. For this first part, this is because this is going to be a very long video, as you can probably tell. So, this part usually spawns are very nice and open for two reasons. Firstly, so you can always spawn here, and secondly, it's because it just gives away the grand scale of this place. So, you go through this area, and you don't really get much loot here, but it, this is a, more of an introductory area. I've added this in just for a bit of interest. I've added multiple pathways, but not too many because I don't really want the player to get lost. So the reason why I hid this chest behind the diary is to get the player used to exploring. Also up here, there's a chest here, but it says um, never climb waterfalls because they're useless because I don't really want the player to be spending a lot of time just climbing waterfalls all the time and random decorations. So there's always that as well, because if you're inclined to always look up there for loot, then I've got that warning up there saying don't do it, it's pointless, and I might actually add another one at the spawn. So this place right here, added in for no reason except for the trap down the bottom, a little bit of difficulty, and a little bit of wood and extra loot. And obviously it's also the first place where you can actually get a renewable source of wheat. Uh, I believe that you can get potatoes. No, not yet. So you, you can't actually get potatoes at this point. So your only two sources of food are bread and carrots. Very weak, so you have to be very, very careful. Now I'll put this here so you can get a sense of where you are and also so the cave spiders can come and bite you on the bum. So so you, you need to be really alert in this game. It's, it's called risk though. And you will be taking a lot of risks when you do these things like decisions that where you don't really know where the end is. So here, added a, I added in lots of wood so the player can actually have a better supply of wood. Um, if this is quite a difficult area. It's full of various spawners. So you can see that I'm spoiling more things. I'm not going to look in there for you there. There are traps everywhere. But I added this in to kind of make it look like that someone has been here before at some point. Like they were kind of blocking themselves in and, and whatnot. Um, I was actually a little bit inspired by... Um, Skyrim and Oblivion when I made this and you'll see more evidence of that in the future so let's move through all this now this is typical there are lots of um, conventions that CTM map makers follow and this is one of them especially for this category which is called linear branching which means um, you find wool in different branches of the area so come to this section this is called intersection one it's quite also conventional to have intersections where you're going Still, there is no saplings, no cobblestone, so you still have to rely on wood tools as your source of things, and it's, at this point it's still possible to completely lose the game. At this point you can set your bed spawn, so you can set your spawn point here. I've offered melons and pumpkins so you can eat more things as well, and I've given away a bit more dirt, because you also notice that there isn't a lot of dirt here. Now what do I mean by intersection? Well you notice that there are three ways that we can go. Each way will lead to a different color wool and usually you do it in the order of left, forwards and then right because the right path will lead you to the next intersection. 
typically. So I've named this one, this area, the Snow Palace. Now I think I put a trap here, but I can't remember. Oh, I've also blocked it off with glass each intersection uh, just to create a, a sense of separation.